Yes, so we're going to look at the uh, the flow express. This is one that I, I modified already, and we'll come back to this a little bit later. But uh, we go through and we set up some basic parameters. So flow express is an enclosed body or an enclosed volume, and you are limited to air and water. Full flow works is, I think, about a $12,000 package. So you better be doing a lot of CFD computational fluid dynamics but it is going to give you a database with just about every fluid, everything that you know you can you can think of. Um, and in addition to doing the internal volume, it's going to do uh, external. So over an airfoil, over the car body, over the whatever it is you're trying to, uh, to generate. So uh, one of the places where I've used this is a, a little heat exchanger, and it was more complicated than this, but uh, kind of gives you uh, gives you an idea. And so the end result that we're looking for is what is happening in the corners and how can I modify this to get this moving through quickly. All right. so if we do the, um, the trajectories, then it's going to animate and show us where, um, you know, kind of as it goes. All right, so the other option is this is from the inlet going to the outlet. The other one is the... Um, balls and I'm not um, I'm not setting a number of 20 is, is usually pretty good and these are going to be a little more difficult to uh, to see so I'm going to pull in a little bit um, so notice that the um, just like we we almost did in simulation we got a, a scale of velocity so inches per second and so where it's hitting those red points it's really cruising along and so Kind of a continuous and the I guess our end game is uh, the one that I'm going to set up for you um, the first iteration has square corners and so I just put in common radius of, uh, of half an inch well if I were to reduce uh, either increase this one or reduce this one um, you know maybe take this up from half an inch to an inch and bring this in tighter then I would be incre increasing the flow and I could run rerun the simulations and try to get velocities as it goes through these mixes to be consistent because we see these, uh, probably see it more on the pipes, kind of see this up and around and over, but it's very fast on the inside, but it's kind of slowing down and that little bump there would be a concern. If I can get rid of those bumps and get a consistent smooth, you know, pretty much a more like this, where if I could follow this radius around and increase that flow, I'm going to have um, I'm going to have more water traveling through there and wouldn't have to have as much pressure. All right, so we're kind of making up the conditions. If I'm if I have a pump, I'm going to go to the pump specifications. If we're using gravity, then we can do some basic calculations and kind of approximate where it's uh, where it's going to uh, end up. All right, so yes. Is there an optimization tool that's automatic? Maybe in the full flow, if you uh, if you spend the twelve thousand dollars, I would certainly hope so. <laughs> um, you know, the design study that I was um, that I was looking for, and we finally finally found um, it did end up that my for some reason my twenty seventeen simulation pro is not finding the full license. So that kind of threw me and frustrated me and. 2016 is, is working, but um, uh, in the process of going through, and I will send this around, um, uh, this is an older version of analysis of machine elements, so SBC Publications has some really uh, really good books. I started in on the, uh, the pressure vessel thinking, oh, we'll just do a quick pressure vessel demo, and it was, yeah, we're not doing quick anything. <laughs> um, I have to dust off some brain cells and... Um, remember uh, remember what I was doing when uh, uh, when I set that up so um, all of these if you're not doing them regularly the simulations the higher end tools um, you don't use it for six days six weeks six months take your pick it's going to slip so I end up back in the books I end up um, picking up um, you know, picking up that information and kind of, you know, I know which direction to go, which uh, I have the I have the start, uh, but then I have to relearn and and go through the process and relearn what uh, 
what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. So um, let's see, I had a I had two flows. All right. All right, so to build this uh, this quickie heat exchanger, um, I created a, um, a sketch. Uh, we just created, well, actually just created the block. So I started off with an extrusion and then went in and created my, my geometry, um, drew, the, drew the path that I wanted it to take, did a, um, a sketch offset and capped the ends. So offset entities and picked a, picked a width and then took my path, selected the chain and converted it all over to, um, to uh, construction geometry and then just did it as a cut extrude. And the basic process, whether we're running the air or the water, is to cap the end. So, and then uh, the other one is I just shared the sketch and made these about the, the same thickness. And right, so one of the things that I could, um, that I could do uh, with the, uh, the higher level simulation is with the, uh, the thermal, um, I can go in here and put a heat source. And once I have the uh, the heat source, then I could put a solid body that is the water, and we could look at temperature um, distribution through an aluminum versus a steel versus com you know, composite, you know, whatever we want to run it through, and kind of see what the heat distribution is through that um, um, you know that very discrete system. All right, so we'll go through the uh, the basic process uh, again. If you uh, if you click, oh, uh, which one did that come up on? Oh, wrong one. Let me uh, make sure I can find it. Um, that was the activation. All right, so this is what it asked for. You click on the uh, mysolidworks.com. It takes you to the uh, to login for your uh, for your mysolidworks account. Um, you copy and paste your serial number, and then it returns the uh, the product code. You put the product code in. Hit OK and you're active. Uh, when they first started uh, with the activation for the Express Tools, uh, you had to contact the VAR and hopefully we, they would get back to you that day, but um, typically it was uh, never fast enough. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it's nice that it's uh, it's an online utility now. All right, so one of the things that we have to do with Flow is um, if we come up and just hit, you know, don't, don't have any idea where to start, Come up and hit Flow Express. It's going to start with a description, and the uh, one is that we have to create an internal volume. So um, they're saying to create uh, openings must be closed with lids. All right. So I don't necessarily have to have uh, an inlet and an outlet. I could have two inlets and two outlets as in, in my definition. Um, but to make things simple, we went with uh, one in and one out. All right. So if I open up a, a sketch. Then to create the lids, um, I think as a general consensus, uh, whenever I've seen uh, the tutorials or talked to people about this, we're just going to convert or to sketch over top of that opening, go into the features, and so that you can easily recognize it, then this is going to be a mid-plane, and it only needs to be very thin, maybe ten thousandths. And that's going to cap the, uh, the inlet or outlet as the case may be. Same thing. I'm going to, uh, to cap, create a feature. And I don't remember if it um, could be a solid body um, as a, a separate, but we can always go back and from our sketch side, just suppress these, these two features for the inlet and outlet, make a configuration, suppress them so that they're not included in whatever working drawing or assembly that we're trying to create. All right, so obviously we would, um, would, you know, we could possibly have the uh, the square ports, but typically I'm going to have a wall. We're going to have an NPT connector or a small uh, push lock or push to um, uh, to fit and 1032 quarter all the way up to the NPTs. Uh, but just for simplicity, we'll stay with the uh, the square blocks. And that, you know, is further going to complicate things once we go from the square to the cylinder and how those geometries and what we're going to do with those fillets and you know we can take it to whatever degree we really need to uh, tend up with in our, our geometry. So mid plane 
And the nice thing about the mid plane is it's pretty recognizable. It's just enough in, it won't affect, but it's enough in that you can, um, uh, you have kind of a full contact patch uh, into the, uh, the geometry. All right, so uh, the issue then is let's uh, bring this out. I'm going to expand my solid body and go ahead and put this in transparency. Uh, when I ran through the first example, um, I was in wireframe and had to, uh, to select the, uh, the inlet and outlet. So uh, we'll see if transparency works any better. Um, but now that we have those, uh, those caps, we can go into the, uh, the Flow Express, going to tell it to go to the next level. And it should automatically, uh, there we go, view fluid volume. And that is the verification that we have an internal volume, that we've capped it off successfully and we shouldn't see it going going off some other direction or anything weird going on there. Um, the narrowest, uh, smallest flow passage um, will identify that area as, um, as kind of your min. And then we go over to the, uh, the fluids. We're going to be putting water through this, but said the express is water or air and really we're just looking you know still still back to that gross error or that obvious we've you know made an assumption in our design that wow that really didn't prove <laughs> prove out very well so um <clears throat> you know we'll we'll try to get something that is uh more efficient in the simulation and then prove it out with our um iterations of um in the manufacturing all right, so the inlet pressure, the volume flow rate is in cubic in inches per second, or the mass is pounds per second. So pressure, um, trying to think um, if we just hooked it up to the, the faucet, that's what, like 30 pounds, 40 pounds, depending on where you live. Where I live, it's pretty <laughs> pretty light. <you> know? <laughs> so um, you know, I want to set for that uh, that point. And when we're working through the solids, we have a, a right click, select other. And the select other will allow us to show those faces. And if I highlight over, there's the inside, there's the outside. So I want the inside. It shows me the direction. And I'm going to set this at um, 30 pounds, uh, pound, pound feet per, uh, per square inch. And then temperature, it's a nice uh, summer day and one of the pipes is exposed, so it's 120 degrees. <laughs> it doesn't even have to go through the hot water heater. Turn it on cold and, <laughs> and you're, you're still getting scalded. <laughs> All right, so we've set up our inlet conditions. And again, start is just kind of best guess and we'll refine and run through a couple iterations to, uh, to, to uh, fill it out. All right, so basically um, the outlet pressure, environmental pressure is um, just static air pressure. So select other, select the face, have the directions, go to the next. And then uh, this is where CPU and memory and all that gets, uh, gets its little test. We go ahead and tell it to solve and um, give it a probably a good minute. And this is not going to be a, um, you know, something that um, you know happens happens right away. So this um, this laptop is um, uh, the uh, the i7 with um, 16 gig of RAM, and from what I've um, encountered, the larger, the more uh, complex the um, the system, uh, whether it's flow or simulation. RAM really is where all of the operations, the number of threads are kind of secondary in your in your processor. Um, even the the video card being able to process the uh, the results is um, uh, comes into uh, into play. Yeah, I think both of these are using multi multi threads. Um, I didn't think I should have turned on the task manager before I started to see if uh, well. On, at the risk of locking it up, oops, wrong one. Uh, more details, performance, memory. All right, so let's see. Windows 10 doesn't um, break it out into. Yeah, actually, it's not 
sucking down all that much. It's uh, running pretty efficient. But, you know, from standard, I want to say some of the simulations on the, um, uh, on my workstation, I've seen it up around 30, or sorry, um, yeah, 30, 36 to 39 gig. And it is just cranking on it, you know, so. Um, so, you know, this is um, not, um, you know, too, but the, you know, the fan's on, it's, um, uh, putting a little bit of a of a load to it. So, all right. So these are the uh, the square corners. We um, uh, saw it solved for the, um, and then I closed it, so it may have to resolve for it anyway. But I think from um, uh, study to study, or from from part to part, it will retain that information. So I don't have to set up the inlet and the outlet again. I, I can go back and I can modify the pressures. Um, but as long as my pressures are staying consistent, as I change geometry, it will just have to go through this process of meshing and then solving for the, uh, for the result. Um, are you will it solve? You showed before that it was solving for collapse. Yeah. Will it also do the heat exchange? Will it solve for temperature? Um, you know, and that that is um, it'll it will solve for temperature if you have that level of simulation on the the simulation express. It's just looking at a static load. So if you have a simulation pro, um, then and put in the uh, the the thermal heat input, um, then um, I don't know that it will go over to express. But one of the things coming out of the the full full Flowworks uh, version is that the simulation and the Flowworks work together. So your term, your your static loads, your thermals, your whatever it is that you're generating, hand off back and forth between the, the flow and um, look at that data. And that is way above my pay grade as far as being able to um, uh, to be able to uh, to push those uh, those numbers through. I know it will do it. How it will do it is like now, like I said before, sit down with the uh, the book, run it through a bunch of iterations, and see what we get. Yes, and in in the simulation, um, there are check boxes that say use flow data in this calculation. So if you know if I have uh, the fluid coming in and this heat exchanger is acting more as a radiator, mm -hmm. and I want to see it pulling the heat out, then Really what I'm looking for is the temperature of the fluid coming in, coming out. My thermal study is how much will this evacuate. All right, so, you know, we saw a pretty, you know, pretty good and kind of in that same area, we're still getting pretty good velocities. But notice the other one was 430. This one's 356. We're losing, you know, maybe not 100, but, um, you know, it's, it's slowing down considerably because it's having to go in those corners. It's having reversion and eddy currents and those those types of things are generating um, uh, yeah, generating those uh, those basic issues so again we can uh, we can uh, animate and it will go through the pipes uh, if I turn the number of pipes up I don't know that we get any better well, I probably don't want to go that crazy <laughs> uh, so up to 38 yeah it looks looks dense Get a little bit more in the corner, maybe, as to what it's doing, but the majority and the velocity is right down through the uh, through the centers, which which we would expect. Um, so one of the um, uh, products that I was involved in designing was a small heat exchanger like this, and the original was um, the the original piece was machined on a, on a manual mill. So um, a lot of these corners were just you know, squared off here, there may have been a radius, but as the, um, the machinist ran to a point, turned the corner, well, we have sharps here and we have radiuses in the corner, so there is some efficiency there. But being able to actually um, change the radiuses, make adjustments to uh, this radius could be a little bit, um, let's say, a smaller radius here or larger radius here, smaller radius here to kind of direct and control. And putting this on the CNC to actually run that pocket, um, 
you know, the 70 uh, inch per second uh, probably was closer to, to 200. And the efficiency was uh, to the point that it was um, it was sucking so much heat out of the system that we were able to back the power requirement of the pump off because we got that higher level of efficiency. So that part of it was kind of uh, kind of nice to prove out that uh, it was um, you know yielding a, a, a better result. Yeah, another question. Yes. Um, so now this is showing the temperature of the loss. Well, the loss of we're not. Of the fluid, or the at, velocity, sorry. Yeah, the um, velocity at the 120 degree temperature, um, based on the calculation going through going through that enclosed okay. volume. Yeah. Um, my question is, is more involved with, with temperature, and, and yeah. if you can see the temperature loss of the fluid, I'm wondering if you can see the heat dissipation within the heat exchanger. Yeah, you. I I, I, I want to say that the um, the fluid. We're not really setting up for the fluid, and, and that was kind of one of the, the things that I've, I've tried and experimented with when it was just the thermal, um, creating a, another solid body that was a static fluid. And, you know, for, for water, going from lumen to water, how does the, the thermal, when we have the input source, how does the thermal travel from the aluminum into the water um, having, you know, with it just sitting there? And where, where where does that distribution go? Because well, I don't don't have the full flow where it is taking that that heat with it and affecting the uh, the, the thermal the thermal side of the dynamic. So you know again, yes, I, I think it will give you results, but you're going to be looking at two different solutions. Is one on the flow side is what is it doing as it's traveling through, and on the simulation side, uh, what is happening within the exchanger within the aluminum component as that water is what is going through. So we would see the hot spots, the cold spots. And ideally we you know for heating this up, we would have a nice hot spot that, you know, pretty much everything that occurs um, shifts and um, you know this outlet is at its max temperature. And you know, we're pretty much giving up heat as it's as it's going out. And then to a certain extent um, the hottest water is also adding back in, you know, at these two points, adding back into the, um, into the mix. All right, so if we go back, um, I would just um, go ahead and close that one out. I may want to use it again, so I don't think I'll, it, it may preserve it anyway. So um, let's go back to the, um, the flow one. To the flow and the radiuses and so all i did on this one was i saved it um, uh, did a save as and continue so that i could uh, make the modification i added the fillets into the um, uh, into the internal and it's able to um, to just see that change in geometry so it did have to um, remesh and resolve but without any changes, it just goes back and it picks up the results. And I can go back into the uh, the animation. Nope, it's just having to resolve it. But certainly a lot quicker because it's looking for, for changes or, or differences. Well, that one got away. <laughs> that makes me wonder what's going on there. <laughs> Yeah, might have. Uh, yeah, might have had a. Um, now that that is a good point. I have not looked at the uh, the file naming, but there there should have been separate separate files picked up in there. Um, that that is not. Well, let's see. Yeah, it's still trying to go over into that corner. So that's interesting. Yeah. Time to send the video to SolidWorks. SolidWorks um, <laughs> guys and go. Hey, what's this doing yeah. over here? I did it over here. Sorry. Uh, from the um, from the get go, um, probably would go in and change the uh, the radius and change it back, and it would see a, a change in the system or an, an update. Um, let's see if we go back. Yeah, actually, well, it says completed there. We didn't change anything on the input or or um, output uh, values. Now, 
And I think it's kind of just cranking through it there. Yeah. So that being the case, um, yeah, we're before we had the uh, the 430, and that was um, yeah, that was definitely in the time to go back and watch the beginning video again and see what what I told it to do. All right, so um, well, let's see, I've got uh, a little bit there, so let's see if it'll pull up a, enough for 625. And rebuild. All right, brought that kind of more to a point, but when we go back through, all right, so it flashed real quick. Yes, there was a change. The reason I asked about the heat exchangers is because I've done, I've built chill, uh, chilling yeah, okay. modules mm -hmm. for uh, brewing. Yep. And um, you want to see what kind of, you try to chill that liquid down. Right. And so, you know, how much, how many feet of copper tubing do I need <laughs> to, to, to get it? Turn into a coil. Right. To, you know, to get it to cool the liquid. To cool enough. Yeah. Uh, in a certain amount of time from yeah, you want when to it's coming out. It as quickly as possible. And if you're going through like a block exchanger like this, could like imply a uh, uh, so, uh, uh, mm -hmm. plate or something like right. that, and then this would tell you hopefully where to put that. You know, if you want to right. just put it on the whole thing, or put it in the center, or mm -hmm. how, how to deploy it. Um, so it would be um, that would definitely be interesting. Is uh, do the uh, the sweep, you know, kind of the tapered sweep or the tapered helix. Mm -hmm. And you know, have it go from large coil down to a little bit tighter, so it's coming in, and and uh, you know, play with some of the geometries on a on a coil like that, coil. and, and uh, see what it would uh, would do. So, so this one with the uh, the radius is going to take um, a little bit longer, yeah, as soon as it uh, has to do that extra mesh. So if that'll run in the background without choking, yep, can't can't switch over. I was hoping I'd uh, I could jump over and start talking about the uh, the internal. Uh, I was gonna do one for air. I always uh, for the uh, the air example, just kind of while this is going. Um, the air example, I just generate a smooth spline, and <clears throat> at the end we put a um, a step, and um, just kind of assume that it's a nozzle or you know it's not in any any geometry that I need to do anything with and on the manufacturing side it would almost have to be three axis and um, and then clamp together for it to, to generate that geometry because getting the the small tools getting it in on the lathe and making those blends and, and geometry um, yeah pretty um, pretty scary uh, type stuff I'm sure uh, with the right tooling and a, um, a dual spindle machine where you could retain the datums, yeah, I could probably get get a small enough pouring bar in from both sides and make make the blend. But um, there again, do I have the uh, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for that particular machine? And how cool would that be? But um, not in my toy box. And so, uh, how would you manufacture something like that if you're cutting that out of aluminum? This this piece. Yeah. All right. So um, you know we, we 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 talked a little bit about the manufacturing process. We we're going to figure out what connection, and if it's a uh, let's say it's an eighth inch NPT. So I would start with the uh, the whole wizard, kind of lay out this path. Start with the whole wizard, but this would be a rounded, uh, filleted termination, and the NPT would would intersect into those um, uh, into that into that cavity. Um, this would also be tall enough to take on that uh, NPT, but then um, where, where it generated the lid, then this would be bolted and either RTV. I don't really want to do a, uh, an O-ring if I can help it, try to get an O-ring to follow this all the way around. But if I can get the two plates um, flat enough and get a decent um, uh, sandwich of RTV over... Um, uh, over the female, then putting the uh, the plate on top of it and squishing it in, I may get a little bit of uh, extrusion into the, uh, the the cavity, but probably not enough to worry about. That was my question. I mean, 
it, it's a two-piece. Yeah. Short answer is it's going to be two pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, you know, right. And the other side of it is uh, what happens when we put radiuses in the bottom. If I cut it with a ball end mill, so it is getting closer to a tube, where we're not even having to deal with uh, so much of the wall surfaces. All right, so now we're up to 455 with the uh, the 0.625 as it comes around that corner and really gets whipping. <laughs> And so, you know, there's going to come a point just, you know, kind of like the simulation. If we're looking for convergence, maybe my next iteration gets me to 460 and the one after that 461 and the one after that 460. At that point, I'm done. I'm not going to get any significant amount of, uh, of increase out of it. So, you know, we, we've got to call it good and, uh, you know, go on to something else. Um, so let's go ahead and run that through. All right, so the you know kind of the next step would be to take these uh, these corner fillets out so that I can adjust them independently of you know this this full round, but be able to um, you know not not quite uh, a full constriction, but as it goes through and it releases in that volume, you're going to get that natural um, acceleration of the uh, the fluid going um, um, going at different speeds as it hits these uh, hits these corners. So. A lot of fun to go through and uh, beat that one up. Okay, so the internal volume then. Let's um, let's just go ahead and section that one. So just kind of a, a spline, two two node spline, and uh, ends up being kind of the uh, the base like structure, but it's going to be the same. Now, for whatever this nozzle or for whatever we're having this do, um, it's going to be the same basic um, workflow, base, basic process. So, um, actually, let's get out of the, uh, the section view and go into the sketch. Since this is single, I'll just convert it and I'll go a little bit quicker. Um, extrude 10 thousandths and the um, uh, mid plane. All right, so there's my outlet, and we can, you know, it's not really outlet or inlet. We can reverse them and run, uh, run the study either way. Now, un unfortunately, you know, unlike the simulation, we don't end up with the tabs where I can set up those different conditions and flip back and forth between them. Um, so, it, you know, at the express level, it does have to run each one. Set, re, change the parameters, um, solve, and then go back through the um, through the mix to look at the the different results. Okay, so those are capped, and um, everything merged. So if I were to go to section view, this one's going to lend itself pretty well to the uh, to the section view. And just to be on the safe side, because I don't want to do that again, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And go back into the Flow Express. We have our new, we have the completely closed lids. We're going to check for volume. And because we have that, um, that minimum, uh, let's see, small. Let's see, smallest flow passage. Well, I thought it was telling me, but maybe it's end to end. Okay, now I don't remember what that one did. All right, well, maybe we're uh, uh, going to go back and look that one up. All right, so this one we're going to set for air. And air, water, um, you know, just whichever, uh, whichever fluid. All right, so um, pressure, let's put... Um, We're at 120 um, pounds per uh, per square inch, and we'll set the first inlet here, and then atmosphere coming out. And we'll go to here, All right? And then where did it go? <laughs> Either I hit the uh, the checkbox and didn't mean to, or um, I blinked. All right, so check. Yeah, I hit the checkbox instead of the arrow. So make sure you're hitting the arrows. Next, 
and then we're going to uh, to solve. All right, so kind of straightforward meshes. Um, yeah, it's not making all the twists and turns, but it's still going to go through. It's going to create that um, pretty much the meshes along the wall and go through and do the uh, do the solve. All right, so let's um, bump up. And I kind of jumped over the reports because most of the time I'm really interested in what's happening at the um, uh, with the velocities. <clears throat> so we'll jump that one up. We do have some uh, some pretty good swirl going on inside, but then once it picks up, you know, we're back to that at 120 psi. We're getting a, a you know pretty big jump in velocity from 1600 up to 22,000. So whatever it is, that's coming out with a pretty good blast. All right, and if we switch it over to the uh, to the balls, um, let's go ahead and well, we'll animate both of them. But moving kind of slow and moving very fast. <laughs> All right, so we'll stop that one. Let's go back to the pipes. And the nice thing about the pipes is it does go start to finish. So you know, kind of what the, the calculation is. So pretty much if we kind of reduce the, uh, the taper, it looks like everything's kind of bottlenecking as it gets, gets down. And so that's where the, the reversion is coming back in. Um, you know, across this area, having to um, get through the uh, the traffic jam. Yeah, I'll, you know, getting getting into the to the mix, but. Yeah. Well, and and uh, as a dynamic process, this may be twisting through here that we're not going to see over time that as we um, you know as as this changes this could this um, could be rotating within that volume as everything else is going but in this one sequence or this uh, snapshot in time that's where it's at or what it was calculated at currently so can you change that to, to air that, or from air to water yeah uh, what I wanted to do first, well, let's do it for both. Well, let's go to water. Um, change the recalculation from the beginning. Yeah, whatever. And what I wanted to do was change my... Direction. Yep, yeah, have it go the other way. Already an outlet. <laughs> and you're not going to let me do that. All right, so... Um, how about we start completely over if you're going to, to do that and just go ahead and clear my selections. All right, so I guess I have to clear the selection there, go back to that one, clear the selection. And other than the uh, the density of the fluid, I mean, we're going to see some acceleration differences because of the density of the fluid, but... Um, Water is not a compressible medium, so... Yeah. So if we actually got the uh, the water at 120 pounds... Yeah, 120 pounds of steam, but what happens... <laughs> So I've, I've changed the conditions enough that we're going to 120 coming in and it hits this this opening. That would be interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the fun part of the what-if scenarios. Yeah, so, you know, while we're, while we're playing... Oof, doesn't even <laughs> spreads out a little bit and uh, doesn't even care. <laughs> it's just going to hit that backside, and we really didn't uh, really didn't do anything there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's there's not enough for it to to start to. So let's take that down to. Yes, we know. Did I hit enter again? Or I hit enter on the keyboard that time. Alright, so face. Face 2. Well, at least these are, are solving fairly quickly. So, And with most of the, uh, the meshing, nothing really changed with the mesh. Should solve uh, pretty quick. Oh, 
Well, even at, at 20, the velocity drops off uh, quite a bit, so we can kind of expect some arcing. Um, but really, um, really kind of accelerates through that, um, you know, that, that neck again. So I, I, I think, um, you know, if you're, if you're setting up the system uh, for, you know, whatever it is that you're, um, you're testing, let's go this way. I'll try and complete my thought before 30 seconds. Um, you're going to have a pretty good, and you're going to have expectations, and you're probably going to have some assumptions. So what you really want to do is challenge your assumptions. That you know, you're, you're either proving or disproving, and um, I did it again. Darn it! <laughs> really got to stop hitting enter for uh, between those. All right, so let's go ahead and solve. Um, so you really want to challenge the assumptions, and then again through several iterations, how can I make this more efficient? How can I get this to, um, you know, or in the case of less efficient, how can I you know inject more, uh, you know, for for whatever reason. Uh, to slow it down or to uh, to create those uh, those issues. So, right. uh, we're still at twenty. Um, twenty psi in in and you know getting up to that um, uh, bottleneck and then what happens at the end. So with the water and the, the compression, we're certainly not seeing that swirl. And pretty much linear, would think that it would spread out more. Yeah. I mean, it's going to, back pressure is going to fill that volume eventually. So, but the main velocities, either that or it's, it's way, it's far enough below 34 at that point that those are yeah, negligible or you can kind of, uh, I say ignore them, but they're not participating as much. Yeah, they're just on the, the yeah. So, you know, it comes back to do I really need this much arc? You know, for whatever I'm trying to achieve, I can reduce that arc. I can save some machining time. Um, certainly doesn't um, uh, get as complicated when I get to that point and, you know, maybe this tapers back more and we have a little bubble there. Yeah, I can go and make some. Um, some manufacturing decisions as um, as we go as you know to get to that uh, that desired result. Is there a way to save that as video file? Um, so there is the um, the generate report. Uh, what is that? That will snap the images at the um, the, the same. Uh, I don't think there's a save to TVI in the mix though. It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's go ahead and generate through the report and see. Maybe. There we go. I want to save your... Okay, go ahead and save. That's always a little scary. Go ahead and save the Word document. Well, I wanted to see it. <laughs> I don't know where I saved it now. <laughs> Did anybody pay? Well, let's go back and watch the video and figure out where I saved it. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping that it put it in the, uh, the same and... Um, so there should only be one more document in here anyway. Oh, jeez. All right, I'll just rerun it because I hit save too soon. And, of course, it put it somewhere completely different. Just to, nope. All right, put it in. Okay, put it in. All right, so the simulation creates these um, uh, their study folders. Oh, all I had to do was cancel it. Well, that was easy. <laughs> all right, so uh, first pass, uh, flow tool, pressure, um, the faces, and maximum velocity. So, are there anything else? Anything else that we can put into the report? Well, this looks max. So. Uh, if we were to take that image, I can snap that image. It would insert that image into the report as uh, as we go. So, um, can you snap the image in mid video and get the, the partial like snap it right there, or and mm, get that back wall. No, oh, yeah. yeah. Now it's jumping to the um, jumping to the end. 
So in that case, then you go out and you grab um, Screencast-O-Matic and you <laughs> record the <laughs> record the image and yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, we're not we're not proud. <laughs> I'm not proud. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know, again, just overview. Be aware that the tools exist. You find some applications for them. Um, you got to kind of go into it with the, the have fun and see what the results are because uh, these these will frustrate you fairly quick. And um, you know, I I don't have the the higher level math to um, to really be able to to get into the nitpicking detail of why it does what it does. But you know it does does yield results. We can get those efficiencies up. We can do quite a bit in, in with this really basic tool. And even if we make some assumptions about the density of going from water to alcohol to gasoline to whatever, um, we can get enough of a value out of it to say, well, you know, if this is a lighter fluid or a heavier, maybe um, um, you know. It's a 50 weight motor oil or gear, you know, 90 weight gear gear loop. Um, you know, we make some basic assumptions that wow, if this is much denser, then it's going to have these results versus versus those. So, um, you know, get in there and um, tinker around with it, see what you can do.